Hello and welcome to East West Healing and Performance's YouTube channel and today I want to talk about the female reproductive system. Now keep in mind this is a two-part series so definitely tune in to part two. Probably come out in the next couple weeks. In the meantime don't forget to visit our website at eastwesthealing.com to opt in to download your free ebook called the Stress Reduction Manifesto. Now the reason I'm doing this I would say is more for education purposes. I think it's important to realize that you know most of our clients or most of my clients are women and I find that most women don't even understand their cycle from a physiological standpoint not from a dysfunctional standpoint but from a physiological standpoint and I feel like I know more about their cycle than them and it's important to realize that if you're a female that you need to understand your physiology just to understand who you are so you're not afraid of it. A lot of the times what we don't know or understand kind of creates fear in us as well as the medical community. But it's important to realize it because if something's going on and not working, if we understand what's going on physiologically, then we can really do the things in our life to actually regulate it. And I find that women's menstrual cycles can be, I don't want to use the word easily, but it can be regulated through proper lifestyle management and proper nutrition with very minimal to no supplements. Now, of course, when we talk about Aunt Flo, most people are afraid. You know, the medical community, when it comes to women, they've taken the power away from women uh, when it comes to pregnancy, making women afraid of their cycle, maybe wishing that they didn't get it, they're afraid of it. Um, and I find that most people are afraid of it because they don't understand it or know it. And nowadays, you know, people are taking the birth control pill or devices to actually stop it. And what this tells me is how very little women know about their monthly cycle. Now the monthly cycle is magnificent, magnificent, ugh, magically orchestrated event designed for the purpose of new life. That's what it's about. That's what women are here for. Within a woman, the 24 to 36 day cycle, which is normalcy, typically 28 days in a perfect world, there can be many fluctuations within the hormonal patterns that occur. These fluctuations in hormones can present symptoms, of course, such as breast tenderness, lower abdominal cramping, light spotting, hunger, mood issues, lack of concentration, depression, bloating, anxiety, etc., etc. This is why most people are afraid of it. But that's your body telling you, hey, something's going on and this isn't working properly because most people that get a normal cycle know it based on the days, how many days it is, not based on their symptoms. Understanding your cycle and hormonal fluctuations can actually help identify and make sense of how you feel on a good day. There is an explanation for how you feel and an understanding your body gives you and the, the key is are we tuning into it to learn how to support yourself within your life and nutrition to minimize the effects of your monthly cycle. And that's the important factor, understanding it so you can minimize the effects. Now there's four organs that are involved. It's very simple. You have the ovaries, the uterus or the endometrium, the egg follicle, or the corpus luteum. Now every phase of the menstrual cycle serves as a specific purpose and there's many different hormones involved. The first, first hormone is gonadotrophin releasing hormones or GNRH. It's relief from, the, release from the hypothalamus to basically stimulate the pituitary. Follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. And luteinizing hormone LH, which is released by the pituitary under the influence by the hypothalamus. And of course, estrogen and progesterone. It's produced by the ovary in response to FH and LH, as well as some in the adrenal glands. FH is estrogen stimulating and LH is progesterone stimulating. Now keep in mind, we have homeostasis. And this is important because in a homeostatic state, our physiology is working appropriately, normally, and we don't know our cycle based on our symptoms. We understand our cycle based on the amount of days and the changes, positive changes that are going on within our physiology and within our body. Homeostasis is the ability to maintain a constant internal environment in response to ex and environmental changes, which we believe can be easily managed, manipulated, controlled by how we live and how we eat. 
The hormones of the reproductive system communicate through a negative feedback loop, reducing the output or activity of any organ or system back on its normal range of function. That's what your physiology is all about. Now let's look at the 28-day breakdown. Every female is typically born with approximately 1 million ova at birth. By puberty, this is when girls typically start menstruating. They're menstruating earlier and earlier these days because of, you know, some people believe it's the hormones that are in dairy, because of the plastics, whatever it may be. It's because of the added stress in our life. The number of eggs remaining drops about 300 to 400,000. And during each cycle, the number of eggs begins to ripen, but only one is actually, or few, are designated as the ovulatory front runner. So let's look at the cycle. We break it down in days, and this is in a perfect world, of course, the utopic world. But if we understand it, we can understand possibly what's going on with our cycle, possibly what phase is dysfunctional, etc. And I can tell you this. I work with women all over the world. Women that have done lab after lab, saliva, blood, doesn't matter. And I honestly have never seen a lab and the hormones that are prescribed or supplements actually do the trick. I've actually seen lifestyle and nutrition management work, I would say, a hundred times better over time to not just eliminate symptoms. Remember, the absence of a symptom doesn't equate to health. But actually regulate their physiology so they, over time, get a cycle or get a normal 28 to 30 to 34 day cycle with minimal cramping, you know, less clotting, less flow, etc. So we have day zero to 14, which is the follicular phase. And this is menses. This is the disintegration of the inner lining of the uterus, of the endometrium. You have a new egg follicle. The egg is the small red dot in the center of the follicle. It begins to develop in one of the ovaries under the influence of FSH. Around day 10, FSH begins to decline in response to another key reproductive hormone called estrogen. Estrogen becomes very built up during the follicular phase and gets quite high, high at ovulation in response to follicular development. The more mature the follicle becomes, the more estrogen it produces. Progesterone levels remain low during this phase of the cycle because there is no corpus luteum until after ovulation. The endometrium will grow from just a few millimeters thick following your period or your menses to around 10 millimeters thick during the ovulatory phase. Estrogen also facilitates the secretion of cervical mucus from the cervicus, cervix. Sorry. Cervical mucus is central to fertility and assists in helping protect, nourish, and transport the sperm. And you can know when you're in this phase because your cervical mucus actually increases and you see it, it's that kind of like, you know, uh, egg white um, consistency. And estrogen triggers the production of LH. And we could say that estrogen is actually more quote unquote dominant during this phase. I don't mean you're estrogen dominant, but it actually is the dominant hormone in this phase. And if we simplify it during the follicular phase, we could say that estrogen is more dominant based on the reasons I just explained. And during the luteal phase, which is the second half, after ovulation, progesterone is more dominant. So it's a cycle. That's why it's called a cycle. You have the fluctuation of those two hormones per se. Now if we look at days 14 to 16, this is ovulation. This is when you get the sudden surge of LH stimulating ovulation. The rupture of the follicle and the re release of the egg into the fallopian tubes. It's under the influence of LH and LH functions to wear a hole in the surface of the ovarian follicle. Ovulation occurs 24 to 36 hours following LH surge. This is when you're most fertile during your cycle. Now, of course, in a perfect world, it's 24 to 36 hours. Based on my studies of the work of Dr. Timmons, you know, they used to say it was 24 to 48, but over time it's actually gone down to 24 hours. And this is why, you know, there's so much physiological and biochemistry involved in getting pregnant, but I also think there's a huge universal force um, or, and, and, you know, nature um, is at work when people get pregnant. Because why can some people get pregnant when they have nothing wrong with them? And how come when people are smoking cigarettes and drinking and doing drugs, they can get pregnant? So this is ovulation. It's when we get that LH surge. 
Now, there's some factors that can disrupt ovulation. The bottom line is any stress of any kind can actually affect ovulation because when you think about it, if the body's in a stress state, it's essentially based on what textbooks say. It's in a sympathetic state. You're running from a lion. When you're running from a lion, you're not really thinking about you know, eating, that's why digestion slows down. You're not thinking about procreating, that's why libido slows down. You're thinking about safety and security. So a lot of things are actually diverted from the hormonal system to help the body move, get blood to the extremities, the brain, the eyes, etc. And the bottom line is, the way we look at this is low body temperature. Being in a hypometabolic state. If we're not producing energy, we're in a kind of a stress state. When we're producing energy, we're in a homeostatic state. So a little test you can do that will tell you a lot of things, not, a, not just about ovulation, but when you wake up in the morning in bed, take your body temperature and pulse. If your pulse is super low, let's say below 75 or below 70, if your body temperature is below 97.8, then we know you're in a hypometabolic state. And we could say that your, your physiological foundation isn't enough to support life, thus you might not be ovulating. Some symptoms of ovulation would be mid-cycle pains, increased libido, change in cervical mucus, as I talked about because of those surges, increase in body temperature, spotting, and breast tenderness. These are all positive. We're not looking at the negative aspect of it. Now, of course, if you have a low body temperature, but your temperature goes up, then we know you're actually surging. But you might not be in a place where you can actually support life. Remember, it takes life to give life. If you're not in a homeostatic state, how are you going to support yourself? How are you going to support another life? Now, if you look at day 14 to 28, this is the luteal phase. We talked about the follicular phase. We talked about the ovulatory phase. This is the luteal phase in a perfect world. After ovulation, the egg is brushed by waves of hair-like cilia through the fallopian tubes and towards the womb. Once the egg is released, it can live for 24 hours. If pregnancy is actually desired, this is the most fertile time of the month. And remember, estrogen declines and LH actually drops off the map following the development of the corpus luteum or the luteal body. Its function is to secrete progesterone to warm the body for pregnancy. This is why women might feel uh, a warming of their body during this time. Now, progesterone is now the quote-unquote dominant hormone because you get a change in your cycle of your hormones. If you're not progesterone dominant, it's the more dominant hormone that kind of controls this phase. Progesterone helps the endometrium to thicken and become more vascular and also inhibits contraction of the uterus and the development of a new follicle. And cervical fluid will decrease or become more sticky and firm. Now, if no implantation occurs following ovulation, the corpus luteum will begin to degenerate halfway through the luteal phase, and progesterone levels will begin to decline. The sharp decline in estrogen and progesterone leading to menstruation functions as a hormonal trigger to begin the production of gonadotrophic releasing hormone and FSH, beginning a new cycle. So, of course, if we don't get pregnant, we start a new cycle. It's that simple. Now, if an egg is actually fertilized and conception actually takes place, a hormone called HCG then takes over the role of LH for the purpose of maintaining the corpus luteum. Progesterone is essential for the maintenance of the corpus luteum and in the preservation of the endometrial wall, which would otherwise degenerate, which is your menses. So hopefully you understand your cycle. That's what this this is that's what this is all about. Understanding your cycle. What are the hormones involved? What are the, what are the organs involved? What are the days of my cycle? What are the phases of my cycle? So I can understand what's going on, so I can understand my physiology. And I think it's very important to understand that, because if you don't understand something, how can you fix it? And if you're trying to fix something based on symptoms, all you're trying to do is eliminate a symptom and not really regulate your physiology. Now, there's many reasons why women have hormonal imbalances, of course. And it's important to look at you and possibly why you have it. But the bottom line is, a stress is a stress is a stress. And the more you manage your life, and the more you manage your nutrition, to set that physiological stage, so you can support, support yourself, your menses, as well as possibly support another life, you'll bring yourself to homeostasis. 
And now you'll be that person that doesn't get their cycle based or understands their cycle based on cramps, based on mood changes, based on quote unquote that time of the month. You'll be the person that understands your cycle based on the amount of days your cycle is, your body temperature, your libido, your cervical mucus, etc. So hopefully you've enjoyed this YouTube. Hopefully you've learned some things about your body and your physiology. Stay tuned for part two, which will be coming out in the next couple weeks. Don't forget, in the meantime, to visit our website at eastwesthealing.com to download your free ebook. And if you're interested in learning more in-depth information about your physiology, as well as how food affects your physiology, visit our web our program, The Metabolic Blueprint, at www.themetabolicblueprint.com. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out of here.